it's Kim Arnold here with a process video for Dusty Attic chipboard. So I am working with some floral pieces, butterflies, a really cool title and a uh, word bubble. So all the details of the products used I will put in the description below. Um, and there's also a blog post right up on the Dusty Attic blog if you are interested in the written version of the instructions to make this layout. So at the moment, I'm just preparing all my chipboard. So the first thing I've got here is the wildflower number three piece. So this is a large piece from that sheet of chipboard and I'm painting up the stems in a dark green. And then I'm going to move into painting the flowers in a sort of mid steely blue color so i'm just going through and doing that now going through and doing that now so i'm going to get everything painted up so that i can put it aside so it can dry while i work on the balance of the layout and for the rest of the layout i am using a 49 and market collection which is the curator's meadow collection which works perfectly with these gorgeous natural style chipboard pieces from Dusty Attic. So this is a gold paint and I am painting the title. The title reads, this was such fun, which is perfect for these photos of my niece that I'm scrapping on this layout where she is climbing on, um, climbing in the playground. I didn't, uh, this gold's not a super bright sparkly gold. It is a more sort of subtle vintage gold. Now I'm just painting the word bubble here and because it has engraved words in it, you don't want to paint it heavily with, with a paintbrush because the paint will then seep down into the words. Instead, what I used was a sponge dauber and I also patted off the paint before applying it to the word bubble. It's better to do a couple of thin layers of paint on those items with the engraved words than it is to do um, a, a, th a thick coat, one thick coat. So, um, but this gold covered the chipboard really well. It's actually a paint from Stamperia. As I said, not a super shiny gold. It's quite a vintage style gold. And it, with the sponge dauber, it worked really well on those engraved chipboard words. And now I'm just adding some um, Prima sparkly paint uh, in a mid light blue color. It's really pretty. And I'm putting that over the steel blue. And I'm just looking at the colors with the pattern papers that are next to me. I will go back and add a bit more of the darker flat blue and then some touches of the sparkly blue just to get the, uh, the variation right. And I'm also now that the green paint is dry, I'm rubbing over some dark green wax over the paint. So it just gives it a bit of a subtle shine. So again, it's not really shimmery, but it just gives a really nice subtle variation of color to the leaves um, on the wildflower branch. So you can see here, I've got that, the flat blue paint again, and I'm just going over the flowers just because I felt they were a little bit too sparkly blue. Um, so just balancing that out and now going back in and adding a little bit of that sparkly blue paint. And in the end, I think the balance is really nice with the two colors in the flowers and gives them some variation. And I'm now going to paint the butterflies and I'm using a red, so it's a very muted red, a brown and a bronze color to paint these butterflies. So I start with the brown, mix a bit of the red in and then put the bronze on the outside of the wings and then the body is bronze with a touch of the gold added into it. So I did, prepare three different butterflies, but I only end up using two on the layout. So I use the two side on butterflies and not the flat butterfly. Um, so the butterflies I think came up really lovely being painted in the variation of color out along the wings. Um, I think the effect was really nice in the end. And as always, there's close up photos of this layout at the at the end of this process video. And so you'll be able to see a lot clearer how the various 
dusty attic items were painted up and um, how they were used in, on the layouts. I'm just trimming salvage strips off then. Um, details of the 49 and market papers, which are actually available from Dusty Attic, are um, also in the description box below and available on the blog post. So I'm just attaching uh, approximately six inch torn piece of the cream paper over the green paper. Um, and the photos are going to sit towards the bottom there. And I'm going to use um, some of the 49 and market meadow 12 by 12 rub on sheet here. So I'm creating like a meadow of flowers. That's why I think the, the, the branch of wildflowers from Dusty Attic are going to go so well in here. So these are very large. So that's the chipboard item and you can see how that's going to integrate in with the one rub on I've already added. And then I'm going to add this large grass piece with the butterfly and I'll show you how I'll work the wildflower branch around that as we proceed with this process video. Um, so these are from the 12 by 12 sheet. They're quite large rub-ons, but I think they create a really lovely um, wild meadow type effect, which I think is great for these playground photos. And it's a bit different to the usual bright colored playground type layouts you might do um, with photos such as these ones. So they're just um, little splashes that are little, like they look like splashes of paint that are on the rub-ons that I'm just adding in there around the larger pieces. Now this is a grass piece. It's got another butterfly on it. It's also got a caterpillar on it. So it's super cute. And I think that all combined, this is working, working really well together to create that meadow effect. Um, these rub-ons apply very, very easily. Um, they're a favorite of mine and they're great for adding lots of detail to a layout without adding a lot of bulk. Um, so if you like to fit lots of layouts in your albums and you can see there that the wildflower branch looks really beautiful with the grasses, but it is going over the um, butterfly that's on the large piece of grass and I'm going to fix that by trimming off one of the branches and then it will work really well. So the photos are going to go down here. So I'm just going to um, attach those now that the rub-ons are there and you can see I'm just trimming off this branch and so the butterfly will sit between the two chipboard branches but I'm not going to waste that bit of chipboard and I shall stick it over on the right side of the photos which I think looks really nice and balances out nicely the pieces on the left and the title will sit below the photos um, and I will actually perch a little butterfly at the end of the title. The other butterfly is going to go up on the wildflower branch and at the moment I've got um, another chipboard, the full chipboard butterfly above the photos but I end up deciding it's a bit too heavy there and fix, change it over to a rub-on um, butterfly which you can now see here so I'm taking the salvage strip off another piece of the paper from the meadow 49 and market meadow collection and I'm going to attach that across the bottom of the layout to tie those two pieces of pattern paper together I really like this salvage strip because it's got a stitched effect on it so it looks like I've got out my sewing machine and done some stitching even though I haven't um, I could have done, but, uh, you know, it's always a little bit difficult to get the sewing machine out. Uh, and there's my cup of soup over there that I'm having while I make this layout. Um, so I'm getting a couple of pieces from the laser cut, um, laser cuts that come with the Meadow collection. I've got a couple of word strips here and I ended up pulling out a little twiggy heart and a fox. These, my nieces live in um, London, so there are foxes. In fact, they have one living in their backyard for a while. So having a fox on this layout is quite appropriate. And so this pretty well brings together the, um, how my layout's going to look when it's fully attached. And I'm just using my wet glue, which my glue of choice is art glitter glue. And I'm just using that to attach down the chipboard piece um, now that I'm happy with how the whole layout has come together. Um, this is quite a fine and fiddly piece of chipboard and I do like to make sure I get it all attached down properly. Now I had a little bit of a, 
uh, filming hiccup, so you won't see the full stick down process. Um, you will come now to when I've actually stuck everything down and including the fox, which you can see there, the little twiggy heart, which I've integrated with the title and attached the word strips on the chipboard butterflies there. And I've also included a little um, label holder down in the bottom left corner of the layout. So here's some close up photos so you can see all the beautiful chipboard all painted up. I love how the chipboard can be painted to any colors to match in with the layout that you're working on. Thank you so much for joining me for this video for Dusty Attic and I'm hoping that I'll be able to bring you some more videos again soon. Please like if you enjoyed it and if you wish, subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye.